I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I'm pleased that you'd spend some of your evening with us tonight. And I'm also happy to welcome Wayne Johnson. Uh, appreciate you coming and sharing your story with us tonight. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's a blessing now to I, be able to speak for only Savior Jesus Christ. Well, and thanks for coming. And you, uh, you actually were born in the East, is that right? I was born uh, back East in uh, Queens Long Island, New York. Wow. So tell us a little bit about your background. Your mom and dad, were they, you were, they were, were they Christian? My uh, mother and father were Bible readers, but they were not uh, active Christian people. They didn't go yeah. to church an awful lot, uh, but they were very uh, good people. Yeah. Uh, they taught their children properly, I believe, and uh, yeah. I grew up on a small farm, so I was a <laughs> Just a, a hard worker, I'll bet. Hard working work. uh, farm boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, but no particular religion or anything until no until later in no life. No particular huh? religion okay. at all. No. And then after high school, I guess you uh, you were telling me that you joined the, the Air Force. Right out of high school, I went uh, directly into the Air Force. Uh, wow. Uh, and I. Uh, Spent a couple years overseas, and then I came to Utah and was stationed at Hill Air Force Base in oh, 1967. Yeah. Wow! And how, uh, how was that a cultural shock to come to Utah? <laughs> well, uh, when I was over in the Philippines, I received a uh, brochure that said uh, the title of it was "This is the Different World of Utah." So uh, I read through that and got a little bit of uh, <laughs> an idea about what Utah was like, but. Uh, yeah nowhere as near the shock that <laughs> when you finally I got, got here. When I finally got here, realized uh, the uh, brochure left quite a bit out. <laughs> a, a few things probably. But you met your wife at Hill Air Force Base or your While I was stationed at Hill Air Force uh, Base, uh, I met my wife uh, at a base dance. Yeah. And uh, we uh, dated for uh, just over a year. Yeah. And uh, now, was she she introduced me to Mormonism. She was LDS and, uh, then, huh? I took the uh, discussions and was baptized. And uh, immediately thereafter, I, I went to Korea. Wow. Uh, this was uh, in 1968 when they had the Pueblo crisis. Oh, yeah. So uh, I was a newly baptized member of the Mormon Church yeah. over in Korea, uh, where I uh, was introduced to a, uh, an active group of, of LDS servicemen there and uh, we worked with the uh, local people yeah. outside the base that, were, with that them. were members of and, the church and stuff. Uh, some were members, uh, oh. most were not. Yeah. Uh, but we, we sort of worked as uh, quasi uh, missionaries yeah. just going out and, and uh, being kind and, yeah. and meeting with the people. What did, when you joined the church, what did you think of the message that you were hearing? Well, uh, not if having any... You can any, think back that far to, to yeah, the conversion. It's, it's been a long ways back. Uh, not having a uh, real uh, basis of religion in my life, why, yeah. you know, they could have told me anything and I would have probably said, yeah, that, that sounds logical. Yeah. Uh, and. 
a lot of it did sound logical. Uh, I had some questions, but I was satisfied with the answers that they gave me. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm sure your fiance or wife was very encouraging. Was well, she, she certainly was. Uh, she made it very uh, plain to me that uh, we would not be married unless we were married in the temple. So, oh, a uh, little pressure there then. When <laughs> when the time came that I realized that uh, I was in love with her and I wanted to be with her, then obviously that was the uh, choice that I had to make. Yeah, and you chose, simple to, as that. chose to be baptized. So and I a made year that later, choice. A year later, yeah. you get married in the temple. Approximately a year later, uh, I, came, I came back from uh, Korea, uh, got discharged uh, from the Air Force uh, in uh, October and uh, stayed in Utah, uh, yeah. and we were married in the uh, Salt Lake Temple wow. uh, in November of 1968. What, what's your recollection of that experience? Uh, <laughs> just a blur. Was it? Yeah. Just a blur. Yeah. Uh, just trying to comprehend everything that's being said and going on. Yeah. Uh, did you go back very often to the temple? And uh, initially, I uh, I didn't. We didn't. We were we were real busy raising kids. Uh, yeah. My wife got uh, pregnant right away, yeah. and uh, and we just started raising the family. Hmm. Uh, so. But both act you were active in the church though, and we were active. Uh, I was uh, an elders quorum instructor for a while. Yeah. Uh, a uh, deacon's quorum advisor for a while. Uh, I was a ward clerk for a while, and I was a district missionary back in Pennsylvania for a while. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, I was a stake missionary here in the in the Brigham City area for uh, just over two years. Wow! Uh, and I was a uh, high priest group leader. My goodness! Uh, up there in uh, in Brigham City. Was there ever any doubt in your mind that the church was true? I, I gather that even though you rushed, or not rushed into becoming a member, but you probably didn't know everything about the church at that point, but, and you learned more later, but as, did you have a as testimony? As the years went on, I was able to learn more and more. Sure. And whenever something came up that just didn't jive to me, uh, I just shrugged it off <laughs> and said, apparently, I don't need to know that. <laughs> or you'll or understand I'll later. learn that later on, yeah. or uh, sooner or later I'll get an answer to that question. So it goes up on the shelf, as they say, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Anything specific at this point that you ever questioned or wondered about? Oh, gee, as, as time goes on, I, I read the Book of Mormon and I wonder about things. Uh, <laughs> there's a place in the Book of Mormon where uh, the Jaredites come over to America, and uh, I'll try to the best I can to remember this. But uh, <laughs> there's uh, there's a place in there where they're talking about the uh, the northern part of the country is is fully uh, inhabited, and uh, with with these Jaredites, you mean? Uh, or? They say that the the southern part of the land was. Uh, was where they were living, and the northern part was fully inhabited. Mm. Well, you think about that, uh, Earl, and uh, back then we're talking about the Jaredites who were separated at the uh, Tower of Babel. That's right. And uh, how could the northern countries be fully inhabited when there were no people. The only people that existed were those around the Tower right. of Babel. Oh, that's a good so point. So where did those people come from? They couldn't have been there. <laughs> they were the, that's a good I never thought about that for well, that particular Well, things like way. that uh, kind of would come you. into my mind and I'd wonder about those and I'd, I'd mention it to somebody and they'd just shrug it off just like I did. And, yeah. Uh, just went along faithfully, huh? Just went along faithfully. 
Uh, Sounds like you were also a missionary at uh, different times and different places. And I baptized some people so you, uh, when I served my uh, mission service up there as a stake missionary. Yeah. Uh, I was ward mission leader. Uh, that's back before they they did away with that and they turned the missionary efforts over to the bishops. That's right. Uh, you probably so they remember weren't, that. So they weren't stake missionaries anymore. So, so prior to that, I was the stake missionary and ward mission leader and I I went out and uh, wow. uh, gave discussions uh, along with the full-time missionaries and baptized a few people and oh my uh, just <laughs> went along fat, dumb, and happy doing doing how, the Lord's work. Yeah, how long did this last? I did. I did. I served that mission for two and a half years. And, and I an served a little longer than, than yeah. most do. So you joined the church at about age 20. Um, I was 20 years old when I joined, joined the church. And married. And then, so how long were you an active member of the church? Well, let's see. I walked away from the church in 2010. That recent. So, uh, what is that? Oh, okay, well, I'm That's not doing the math either, 33 yeah, or 43. 40 some years, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, so what kind of started you thinking about the church in a different way? I started doing some research on my own uh, in early early uh, 2010, uh, researching a lot of information off the internet. What prompted you to do that? Were you preparing for a lesson or something? Or? Uh, I got into some discussions uh, off and on in, uh, in some of our classes, and uh, I didn't particularly like the answers that I got. <laughs> so I began to uh, to do some of my own research. Uh, I was a, a an instructor, a teacher yeah. in the high priest group for a while, and uh, one day, as I as I was progressing more and reading the Bible more, I began to incorporate more of the Bible scriptures and teachings into my lessons. Yeah, and. Uh, I remember one Sunday I, I decided I took upon myself to teach my entire lesson out of the Bible. A, con a I, conscious decision to do that. I chose to do that. I, I set that instructor manual aside and I prepared my lesson using the Bible. Wow, how radical. Yeah, how <laughs> radical. When I started uh, the lesson, I, I told the brethren, I said, the uh, lesson manual is available to you. If you want to read the lesson, you can read it at home, but we're not going to use it today. We're going to use the Bible. So I taught the entire lesson out of the Bible, and uh, I was called on the carpet for doing that. By, by the, the high priest group leader or the bishop or? Both. <laughs> so, really? So uh, the bishop, uh, I, I talked to the bishop. I said, I understand you don't like the way I'm teaching the high priest group. And he says, well, you're supposed to be using the manual. And I said, well, that's correct. But aren't we also told that we're supposed to teach by the spirit? And of course, there what was only one way he could answer that was, <laughs> yes, that's true. I said, that's exactly what I'm doing. Good for you. Well, I was released from that position <laughs> shortly after that. But, Inspiration, I'm sure, huh? But I am doing my research during this time, and, uh, and, and the deeper I get, I find that uh, a, a lot of the uh, information that's available within the Mormon church itself, yeah. uh, in the ensign and so on, uh, if you really research that real closely and you read it real closely, you'll come across information that they accidentally put in there that most Mormons don't know about. Some of those things pertaining to uh, the actual receiving of the gold plates, as an example, by Joseph Smith. Yeah. Uh, back when uh, Mark Hoffman uh, had his uh, fiasco with the church, uh, there was an article in the Ensign where the church was protecting or, or supporting their position on that, and they inadvertently put information in there, in that Ensign, that wasn't common knowledge. 
new, so, new information, so to speak, to most, new of, information most of us. Huh? Certainly was new information to me, yeah. and I felt that I knew pretty much everything there was to know. Uh, so things like that came up. Uh, yeah. Polygamy came up. Polygamy became a, a big issue. Wow. My research in Joseph Smith's activities with kind of shocking, isn't it? Yeah. Other guys' wives and young girls and yeah, I didn't know he married women that were already married. I'd never heard I that had before. No information like that yeah. at all myself mm -hmm. and. And marrying young girls, uh, 14, 15-year-old yeah. girls, and and uh, telling them that he was going to be killed by an angel with a sword if he didn't practice polygamy. And a little self-serving, isn't it? A little bit. <laughs> after a while, I, I my research, uh, I, I compiled a, a rather thick uh, book of information, uh, talks from different prophets that. Wow. You know, really started studying huh? things that uh, don't apply anymore, and we've yeah. changed our mind. We don't believe that anymore, or whatever excuse. Yeah, and then I finally decided, well, enough is enough, and uh, I chose to uh, present all of this information to my wife as I went along. I never hid anything from her. Well, good for you. I, I wish I could I, say the same, but I, I didn't. wanted to be 100% honest with her all the time, and. Uh, why do you think the LDS um, are reluctant to to study and to learn? I believe it's a fear factor. Uh, I believe the uh, the leaders of the church uh, pounded into them that they should not read or study anything outside of the yeah. uh, accepted uh, works of the church. Even uh, even though truth should stand on its own. They're just not willing to, to even take a chance, right? Truth can be very damaging at times, yeah. uh, and there's an awful lot of truth hidden yeah. by the church that uh, yeah. is damaging to them. So you mentioned your wife. Now, what was her reaction to this? She's born and raised Needless in the church. Needless to say, I guess. she was not very pleased with uh, with all of this. Uh, she really didn't want to hear any of it. Yeah. Uh, I felt sorry that I was, you know, giving all that information to her. But then, on the other hand, I felt that she really had a right to know yeah. where I was coming from. Right. And because uh, you can't deny what you've seen, right, and what you're what you're cannot deny coming it. across and what you're learning. It's especially things that are so very, very well documented. Yeah, it's not you like know, you're making anything up. You know, uh, DNA research. Uh, I got yeah. into that. Yeah. Uh, studied that out, uh, studied out the uh, Book of Abraham and the problems with the, uh, the papyrus. papyrus involved with that. I uh, got in a conversation with a bishop one time, and he just flat out denied that that information even existed. Is that right? And I said, Bishop, you're behind the times. I said, the church has had those papyrus pieces yeah. since 1966, yeah. and, uh, and the Ensign Magazine came out in 1967 and, and finally published the fact that the church had that information. Yeah, it's right there in the Ensign. And, uh, and it became a, a, a rather embarrassing situation when they finally realized that that papyrus did not say anything about Abraham. Yeah, you'd think that if it proved that Joseph Smith was a prophet that uh, it would have been something that you would hear all the time, uh, constantly. Yes, and, and when, it was, when it was originally uh, announced in 1967, yeah. that was the big Well, they assumed hope. it was, yeah, And for they sure. assumed it was. Yeah. They were very proud of that fact. Yeah. So what happens then? You eventually see your, see your faith crumbling, this church that you had converted to? Well, with me, I, I, think, I think God was, was very, very good to me, very, very good to me, because I just sort of went just like that. There wasn't any gradual path out of Mormonism. It went bam. You, you, once I'm, your eyes were I'm open. I'm done. Yeah. And uh, when my wife realized that, she told me, you realize you're losing your family, you're losing your eternal reward, and on and on. And I just looked at her and I said, I'm sorry. 
but I cannot live a lie. Good for you. Uh, it's like being a hypocrite, right? It's you can't like being believe, a hypocrite. You can't believe one thing and, and live another. Yeah. It would be it would be impossible for me to do that, and I knew that, and I couldn't do it. Good for you. Uh, my wife died uh, oh. that very same year. Uh, she died in uh, December of uh, 2010, uh, which, you know, really made me feel bad because she died right in the middle of this turmoil in her life. Oh. But uh, she knew that I loved her. And uh, that love was good, and I think I think she, like a lot of other LDS people, figure that as long as you're not out there doing real atrocious things, sooner or later you'll turn around and come back. So that hope is always there. Yeah, I'm sure family prays for that that uh, that you'll they come do. back. I am. Uh, I have children now that are in the church yeah. and that are devout wow. and don't want to talk about it. No, they just don't want to. And I just pray for them yeah. and uh, make suggestions to them, but wow. beyond that I cannot. How did you make this transition to Christianity then or to, to Christ? Or to I always did have a belief in a God. Yeah. I never was an atheist. I felt that I needed to find the truth because I sure didn't have it where I was at. Yeah. So I started uh, by attending uh, the Main Street Church in Brigham City. Okay. Uh, I didn't attend there on a regular basis, but I went long enough to get a feel for what a Christian church was like. Well, how was that different than your LDS vastly experience? Vastly different, uh, yeah. vastly different. I was, I was really, quite frankly, uneasy uh, for a while. With the music, you mean? Or with the, the music, or? With, the, with the style of the worship. Yeah. Uh, well, it's so foreign All of that to is us, foreign. isn't it? Yeah. All of that is foreign to yeah. somebody who's been in the LDS church for so many years, yeah. where everything is just, regardless of where you go, the church meeting is identical. Wow, so. yeah. Then a wonderful neighbor of mine uh, introduced me to the Aldersgate United Methodist Church yeah. up in Brigham City. Uh, I started going there, and again, I felt out of place uneasy, yeah. uneasy. Yeah. but I was accepted yeah. uh, the the members were very very welcoming yeah. very non-judgmental yeah. and the uh, the way the meetings were held were very non-structured uh, they were not an organized sure, religion that in that sense. There, that, yeah. and uh, over time I felt right at home Wow. And I, now I am very involved with them. Yeah. Uh, I. Uh, You're doing a prison. I teach a right Sunday now. school class uh, there. I play guitar in the worship service. Uh, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. serve uh, as a uh, team member at the uh, Box Elder County Jail, Good for uh, you. where we uh, go and and teach messages uh, a couple times a, a month. Let me and ask you, we're actually, believe it or not, running out of time. I wanted to know how you felt about Jesus as an LDS and, and what he, how different he is now to you. As an LDS person, Jesus Christ was nothing more than a, a helper to get to the celestial kingdom. I was required to do all of my own works. Wow. Continually. So he just... Unfailing. Yeah. And then, lo and behold, if I didn't accomplish everything, Jesus Christ would do the rest. Yeah. Jesus Christ is my Lord and my God. I have full faith that He and He alone Isn't that is a my path. Joyful message. It is a wonderful wonderful message yeah. 
It's the true message. It's the true gospel of Jesus Christ. He who died on the cross, the work is done. It is finished, isn't it? <laughs> I am in Christ and Christ is in me. Yeah. I guess the Bible's taken on a little different significance now too. I love reading the Bible. I read the Bible almost on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, and I understand an awful lot of what I'm reading. When I was a Mormon, I used the Bible only when it was part of the lesson curriculum. Just a few little scriptures here and there. Huh? A little scripture here and there. Always, most generally, always out of context. Yeah. And now, of course, I read those scriptures and I understand the true meaning of them wow. instead of the corrupted meaning of them. Well, Wayne, there's just a little bit of time left, believe it or not. What would you tell the Latter-day Saints? I know you've shared a, a testimony or a story here, but uh, what would you say to them? It would be my humble prayer that they would shed their pride, that they would read the New Testament as a child oh, and so let good. the Spirit guide them, that they will re understand that Jesus Christ is God incarnate. He is our Savior. He is the only way that we will be saved. Wow, great. And grace and works, you don't have to work for your salvation now? We are saved by grace. Now, do you do good Not works, though? Works. Sounds like you're doing some good things. When you are saved, you are full of love. You are driven. You can't help yourself. Yeah. You have to work. Yeah. You, but you do it out of love. You're doing it because you're, you're so thankful that you're saved. Yeah. And that love that God has for you and you have for him, you just look for things to do. Yeah. I am constantly looking for things. Don't we things feel to blessed do. to have our eyes open and see things in a different way? Oh, like a load of bricks taken off your shoulders. Yeah. My really. yoke is easy. My burden is light. Well, Wayne, very, very thank you true. so much for coming and sharing your story. It's a, it's a wonderful story, and I know there are a lot of people investigating the church, and, and I hope that they will take the time to not just listen to the missionaries, but search things out. Anyway, thanks for joining us tonight, and as I say, you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith. Think about that. Not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good night.